What is B lending or alternative lending? We're going to answer that right now. Let's do this. How's it going? My name is John and I am a mortgage broker located in Vancouver and welcome to another video. If this is your first time here and you wanna learn ways to be approved for mortgage, home buying tips and other mortgage related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking on the notification bell so it won't miss anything. You may or may not know, but B lending and alternative lending is actually an area that I specialize in when I first started out as a mortgage broker. There has been lots of misconceptions of B lending. So I'm going to go over what B lending is and under what circumstances a B lender may be a good fit for you. So let's start off. What is B lending? In the mortgage world, we have A lenders and they're the big banks and credit unions. The next level is B lending. And then if you can't qualify for B lending, then it's private lending or C lending. B lenders are non-traditional banks, but they are still governed by OSFI, which is the Canadian government institution overseeing the Canadian financial sector. B lenders offer solutions for clients who need financing, but do not qualify through traditional banks for various reasons such as you know, nature of income or high debt, previous mortgage arrears, poor credit, past bankruptcies or consumer proposals or non-traditional down payment sources. Mortgages with B lenders are typically one to three year terms. And it's usually shorter because plan is so that you have time to improve your financial situation and transition to A lenders without large penalties. So what type of clients are best suited for B lending? Although B lenders can service people with poor credit and people who have been bankrupt and so on, the people who I help with and fit well with B lending are rarely in that type of situation. The most common clients I help with B lending are business for self and commission based jobs. These are the type of clients that are difficult to get approved with A lenders, but they fit perfectly for B lenders. Well, why is that? It's because they're structured their business to pay as little tax as possible, resulting in a very low income on their T1 general. However, B lenders don't actually look at their tax documents. They want to know approximately how much you actually make by reviewing your revenue deposits for the past six to 12 months. We just add those up and that's how we determine your income. B lenders are usually around 2% higher in interest costs than A lenders. However, the amount of taxes you save may actually be worth it. I know some people who are so focused on getting approved with A lending, they pay themselves say 100,000 for two years, but they need to pay around like 30 to $40,000 in taxes. That's about 30 to 40%. Why not just pay 2% more in interest on the mortgage? After running the numbers, most clients are very happy to get a mortgage with B lenders because they can continue using the tax efficient strategies recommended by their accountants. So although there are pros and cons for B lending, it is still something to consider if you are business for self, commission based, or if you have a bruised credit score. Generally, I always want to get approved with A lenders, but it's, if it's not possible, there are a lot more options available. Don't get too caught up with the rate because if you have a tax efficient strategy, you may be better off paying a slightly higher rate with B lenders. And there you go. We just explained what B lending or alternative lending is. And please remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel to learn more and make sure you click on the notification bell so you won't miss a video. I'm John Lee, mortgage broker and CEO of Rise Mortgage. We're always achieving your approval.